Getting worse by the second, in 1865, a soldier would find himself severely injured and his doctor's optimism fading. With a wound to the chest, he was told that this was it. He would not survive beyond that day. But what he didn't know was that this would be just the beginning of his story. His brush with death would ultimately be the catalyst for one of the most successful brands in history, Coca-Cola. However, this journey to fame would come at a cost. Follow along and discover how a dying man would create a drink that would change the world. Stay until the end as we reveal some of the dark beginnings that led to its creation. Refreshing, sweet, bubbly, Coca-Cola may seem like a simple drink, but it would become much more than that. It would become a staple of America, and that would lead to it becoming the most popular brand in the world. But what is now a carbonated soft drink that people consume leisurely was initially meant to be a remedy that would put an end to a man's suffering. Born on July 8, 1831 in Knoxville, Georgia to English immigrants, John Pemberton would begin studying at the Reform Medical College of Georgia in Macon and practice botanic medicine at 19. Before John was a soldier on the battlefield, he imagined a different future for himself with a strong interest in medicine from a young age. Botanic medicine relied heavily on herbal remedies and ways to purify the body of toxins. This form of medicine was not well received by the public in that day and age because it was seen as an unconventional and dangerous form of medicine. However, that did not deter John from his passion and soon later he would also get his degree in pharmacy. But whatever plans he had for himself would be halted when the Civil War began. Pemberton served in the 3rd Cavalry Battalion rising through the ranks. He would become a lieutenant colonel and his service would be considered crucial to the Confederate war effort. In April of 1865, he sustained a sword wound to the chest during the Battle of Columbus. The doctors attending him did not believe that he would survive, and so they gave him morphine to help ease his pain in his final hours. Miraculously, John survived, but not without an unfortunate outcome. Although John attempted to move on with his life after the war and began to practice medicine once again, he developed an addiction to morphine. Despite this, he became a principal partner in the firm of Pemberton, Wilson, Taylor & Company. With the company based in Atlanta, Pemberton moved there in 1870. Two years later, he became a trustee of a university and established himself as a businessman in Pennsylvania too. There, he had his own brands of pharmaceuticals that were manufactured. And very soon, Pemberton was a well-respected physician and known for his work in the lab. However, despite his great reputation and thriving business behind the scenes, he continued to struggle with morphine addiction. On the hunt for a cure for his addiction, he began experimenting and soon created a drink based on Vin Mariani, an Italian-French beverage that claimed to have therapeutic properties in it due to its main ingredients, coca leaves and wine. Believing his drink had the potential to benefit others as well, Pemberton released his new drink, Pemberton's French Wine Coca, to the public in 1885. He marketed it as a remedy that can help fight ailments of the body and the mind. However, when talk of alcohol prohibition began, Pemberton decided to make a non-alcoholic version of his drink, and so Coca-Cola was born. Just a few years after Coca-Cola was first introduced to the public, its creator became ill and his struggle with addiction reappeared. John was forced to sell his rights to the formula to his business partners to stay afloat. However, he had faith in the drink's potential and wanted to keep a portion of the ownership to pass it down to his son. However, his son only wanted the money, so in 1888, Pemberton and his son sold the rest of the patent to a man named Asa Griggs Candler, who was intrigued and bought the recipe. Unfortunately, John Pemberton succumbed to his illness that very year and would never get to see what Coca-Cola became. Asa Candler was an American businessman who became instrumental in the development of Coca-Cola. Candler was extremely savvy and he quickly began to market Coca-Cola as a drink that had health benefits. He even distributed free samples of the drink and advertised it in newspapers and magazines. And by 1895, Coca-Cola was distributed nationwide. Coca-Cola has been able to utilize several different marketing strategies to reach a wide range of consumers. Its impact on the American culture can keenly be felt even today. The company has used celebrity endorsers, interesting television commercials, and creative print ads to spread its message. One of the most notable is their long-standing relationship with the Olympic Games. 
Coca-Cola was the first commercial sponsor of the event, starting with the 1928 Games in Amsterdam and has continued to sponsor the Olympics ever since. The brand has been often featured in many films and on TV shows. As for music, many popular artists such as the Beatles, the Beach Boys and Elvis Presley have mentioned the drink in their songs, only boosting their popularity even more. The brand also has a long history of creating catchy songs to advertise its product. Some of their most famous songs include I'd Like to Buy the World a Coke and things to go better with Coke. Coca-Cola's marketing strategy adapted differently to the seasons as well. The drink has long been associated with different seasons and holidays. In the early days of the company, different ads were created for each season and holiday. Today, Coca-Cola still creates different ads for different seasons, but the focus is on creating ads that can be used year-round. The most popular Coca-Cola ad of all time is the 1971 ad featuring Santa Claus. The ad was so popular that it was re-aired for years afterward. Before Coca-Cola began featuring Santa Claus in their advertisements in the 1930s, Santa was generally depicted as a tall, thin man with a long white beard. He was often wearing a green coat and hat, and he wasn't always associated with Christmas. But Coca-Cola's ad featuring a plump, red-clad Santa helped to popularize the image of Santa that we know today. Santa's image has continued to evolve over the years, but the Coke-drinking Santa is an enduring icon. Another key factor in Coca-Cola's widespread popularity was its unique and appealing appearance, the distinct red and white color scheme, along with the unique cursive Coca-Cola lettering and the bottle's unique form, made the drink stand out from all the other options on the market. This helped Coca-Cola to become one of the most recognizable brands in the world. The first bottling of Coca-Cola occurred in March 12, 1894. However, it wasn't until a few years later that two lawyers from Tennessee, Benjamin F. Thomas and Joseph B. Whitehead proposed the idea of bottling. And while Candler was not confident about bottling Coca-Cola, he allowed them to do so, signing a contract that gave them control of the procedure for only a dollar. Candler would soon realize that he had made a mistake as the change in packaging increased their sales significantly. Many companies have attempted to change their packaging into something similar as well, but have failed to have the same success as Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola has been widely recognized for its association with the United States for many years. However, many people believe that it has a variety of issues including health effects, environmental issues, and business practices. The drink's coca flavoring, as well as the nickname Coke, remain common themes of criticism due to the drink's relationship with the illegal drug cocaine. One cannot deny the impact that Coca-Cola has had on the world, regardless of whether one believes that it has a negative impact on people. The company has been a global leader in the beverage industry for over a century, and its products are enjoyed by people of all ages and cultures. Coca-Cola's success is due to its innovative marketing campaigns, delicious products, and commitment to quality. When Coca-Cola was first created, it was intended as a medicinal beverage. John Pemberton, the inventor of Coca-Cola, believed that it had the power to cure various ailments. Over time, however, Coca-Cola became much more than that. It turned into a global empire, with the drink becoming one of the most popular beverages in the world.